When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those who were speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, M Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Today is Pentecost, the birth of the church, the time in which the Holy Spirit poured itself out upon those disciples of Jesus who had kept the faith and who had held on. It's the time when God poured the Spirit out upon them so that the good news, the gospel as we call it today, might be known throughout the world. Today is the day of Pentecost, and we rejoice that it is the day that God remembered us, that God remembered those who would be in need of a word of good news, a word of love, a word of hope. So today is Pentecost, and to each and every one of you, I say a happy Pentecost. Would you all please join me in prayer? Merciful loving God, I ask that this floor sermon might be acceptable unto you, that the words that are preached might touch some heart, that the words that are spoken might encourage some spirit, and that your people might leave this place knowing that they are indeed deeply loved, deeply, deeply loved, by God, their creator, and by the parent of us all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Now one thing I learned a few years back is that everybody assumes that people grew up in a Baptist union, so they assume everybody knows all the Bible stories because they had to recite them all as they were growing up. Now, I did not grow up in the Baptist Union, so I learned the Bible stories as a grown person, but only because I went to divinity school. And you know, we kind of had to learn it up there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to tell the story again so that we can make sure that we're all remembering the same story, that we're all thinking about the same story. Now, leading up to this point, you recall, after the crucifixion, after Jesus had been crucified, his disciples, along with very many of his followers, went into hiding because they had become people of interest, both to the Roman Empire and to the religious forces of their time. And while they were in hiding, trying to figure out what was the next thing to do, because part of their problem was that they kind of stuck out like sore thumbs. These were, these were country people from Galilee, men who were fishermen, and, and they were in the city. And the one thing that you know is, how many of you have ever seen movies about people from the country in the city? They kind of stick out. So they kept to themselves so that they wouldn't quite stick out that much. And as they were in hiding, as they were out of sight, Jesus came to visit them, and he spent 40 days with them after the resurrection, teaching them once again the things that were really important, teaching them the things that they should know and that they should remember. Now, I thought to myself, why did it take 40 days for him to sort of communicate with them the important things? And it came to me that for the first 15 days, they were probably just sitting there dumbstruck like, I saw this guy die. <laughs> I was there. He looks, he doesn't only look like, he sounds like, and he's even shown Thomas. So for the first 10, 15 days, they were probably just sitting there dumbstruck. And he was looking, have you ever talked to anybody and you could tell that their brain had just froze? They weren't hearing a word that you were saying? So I think that's probably what happened the first 10, 15 days. So he was with them for 40 days and then he ascended. And he said, well, I'm gonna send you an encourager. I'm gonna send you someone to give you strength and hope. That's what we celebrate today on Pentecost. We celebrate when the Spirit fell upon them. And when the Spirit fell upon them, not only was there this loud boom, this loud sound that caught everybody's attention, but as they began to proclaim what was the core of the gospel, which is the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, that's the core of the gospel. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's the core. This is the acceptable year of the God in which the downhearted and heartbroken can find peace and can find hope because God has remembered them and God has brought them close. And each person heard it in their own tongue. Now, I'm not a Pentecostal, so I don't get into the debate about whether or not they're angelic tongues or not, because I'm sure that if an angel comes to visit me, it's not because I've done something noteworthy, but because I need to get back on the right track. So I'm not trying to learn that language. But the text says that they learned, the, they heard the good news in their own language, and they, laid out, they were all from all over the Mediterranean world. They were from the Western Mediterranean, the Eastern Mediterranean, the Northern Mediterranean. They were from Mesopotamia, which is actually when you get into the Indo-Asian world. So they were from all over the world. They were from what we would call today North Africa, and they heard it in their own tongue. Now we're gonna put a pin in that because, that because that becomes important a little bit later about hearing it in their own tongue. So Pentecost is that they heard the good news of the acceptable year of the Lord, and they heard it in their own tongue. So there are many ways in the church that we've talked about this and continue to talk about it. In many ways, we continue to argue about it. Well, what was the point of Pentecost? Why did it happen? How did it happen? Today, I want to touch on one thing. When did it happen? When did Pentecost happen? Pentecost happened 
at the moments of peak Roman oppression of Judea. It happened at the peak moment in which everything was about to boil over and within a very short period of time, the Romans would simply destroy all of Jerusalem. It happened at the time when the cleavages within the society between those who had been cast to the trash heap of society and those who had gained power and privilege so that it became simply hereditary because there was nothing like merit back in those days. It was all, it was all hereditary. And it had reached a point where society was bubbling over. The heel of oppression was very strong the heel of exclusion. Because, you know, the two different things going on is the Romans were creating oppression, the religious authorities and the social and cultural authorities of the Sanhedrin and the temple were creating exclusion. So we were at a point then when it was very easy to feel as if you had been forgotten by God. It was very easy to feel as if God was concerned about someone else. That's what Palm Sunday was all about, right? Palm Sunday was about people who felt that they had been left on the outskirts of society, now finally feeling as if there was a word from God for them, a word for God especially to them those who were downtrodden, those who were brokenhearted, those who were poor, those whose bodies were broken, those who had felt as if there was no hope left. When Jesus came into town, they felt that things had changed. And that's what, so this was a peak moment. Now, in the midst of this peak moment of exclusion and oppression, Jesus is killed. Jesus is killed as a revolutionary because, you remember, they didn't uh, just crucify people for nothing. I mean, there are much easier ways to kill people, much less expensive ways to kill people, much less um, uh, uh, um, uh, work. Crucifixion was always done so that they could set examples, so that they could point to this is what happens to you if you stand against the Roman Empire. This is what happens to you if you stand against the power and might of the empire. So Jesus died in the midst of this peak moment. And so of course his disciples were afraid. His disciples were afraid because it wasn't just that they had killed Jesus, but they were killing everyone who believed him, and they were killing everyone who followed him. So this is when the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit comes to them as they stand in fear, comes to them as they are hiding from the authorities, comes to them at the time in which they know something is going on but they don't quite know what. You know, one of the things about being a Christian today is that people have been reading these stories for a long time, so we know the end of the story. But if you can imagine what it would have been for them. I mean, think about in your own lives when you know you are in the middle of a historic moment, but you don't know what is going to happen. You don't know what you are going to do. You have no idea if what you do is going to make any difference at all, but you still feel as if God has thrust you into the middle of something important. The effect of Pentecost was that these people, these men and women who had become persons of interest, and I know I use that term a lot, but I mean, I really want you to understand that these were not just people that the Roman Empire and the Sanhedrin were annoyed with, right? These weren't just people who were gonna be scurried back home to uh, Galilee, because if they could have gone back, they would have gone back. 
These were people who had been gathered in fear and in a moment, in the blink of an eye, they find themselves standing in the middle of Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news of the acceptable year of God to everyone standing in the middle of Jerusalem, a place that a mere half hour ago, they would have been afraid to walk one by one, forget together, and they find themselves because of the power of the Spirit proclaiming the good news, proclaiming with joy that God's acceptance is for everyone no matter what the religious authorities say, no matter what the political authorities say, no matter what the cultural authorities say, the good news is for everyone, for you, for you, for you, for you, everyone. And this Jesus who came and healed and brought the good news to everyone is bringing good, good news of God's love to you. Pentecost is a good day because it reminds us not just of the good news of God, not just of the acceptable year of God, but it also reminds us that even in times of trial and trouble, even in times when it seems as if the forces of malice have become insurmountable, even when it seems as if the clock is being turned back and all of those, all of us who had felt that we were now on the side of the street in which the sun shines are being asked to step back over into the shadows. That when you are living in times when people pry open the doors of closets that we had nailed shut and they're trying to push people back into those closets, even in those times, in the times when it feels as if all of our work has been in vain, because you know, I've been doing this activism work for about 40 years now, and I'm going to tell you, it, it, you know, it gets tiring. And sometimes you get weary because you think of all you've done, all the marches that you went to, all of the petitions that you signed, all of the advocacy that you've done, and you wake up one morning and you say, here we are, Lord, how did we get here? Even in those times, the Spirit of God, and not even in those times, particularly in those times, the Spirit of God is poured out. Poured out upon those who believe so that your heart can be encouraged, so that you can gain strength, so that you too can be a beacon of hope to any and to all. Now, I said we were going to stick a pin in something, then I'm going to wrap it up. The thing we're going to stick a pin in is that they heard the good news in their own language. Now I'm going to draw a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a delineation here. It didn't say in the language of the land in which they lived. It didn't say the language of the land in which they were visitors. It didn't say in the language of the land in which they were strangers. It said in their own tongue. So what that means is that the word of God was given so that every nation might hear it, so that everyone might hear it, so that you didn't have to be a special person to hear it, because it was a word of good news, the acceptable year of God for everyone, no matter your station in life, no matter the geography of your birth, no matter the cultivation of your affinities, no matter your education, no matter what your people look like, no matter what they sound like, no matter how they move through the world, the good news is for you all. And in times like these, 
I cannot think of something more about which to say hallelujah than that the good news is for us all. Amen.